What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today, we have some exciting new content for you today. We are no longer working on a CRV. In fact, I have wrapped up all the CRV projects I have right now. I had four of them, two of them are sold, and the other two I'm keeping. So for now, we don't have any more uh, RD1 CRV content, but we got a lot more Honda content coming your way. I uh, talked about another video that I was holding on to a bone stock Honda Civic SI right here. It's uh, original Milano Red Honda Civic SI, all completely stock. Now, there's not an intake, there's not a muffler, there's nothing on it, which is really hard to find this day and age. Unfortunately, there are a couple issues that need to be addressed. So starting with the engine and transmission, um, basically when I purchased it, the owner had already told me that there was a third gear grind. And once I took it for a test drive, it was clearly evident there is definitely a grind in the third gear synchro at high RPM, it's there at low RPM, it's really hard, no way to get around it. So in order for me to fix that, I would have to remove the transmission and pull the case apart and remove that synchro and replace it. So I figured while I was at it, maybe I would also do some engine work. Now the engine in the car is the original D16 Z6 engine. It is a pretty high mileage engine. I think there's 230,000 miles on the clock right now. So the previous owner did also tell me that it burns a little oil. I'm sure that the piston rings are tired because you know she's an old motor and she has seen a lot of abuse probably in her time, given that the third synchro is gone, third gear synchro is you know grinding and whatnot, whatnot. But I think that makes sense to begin an engine swap. So that's going to be the project for today. I'm going to actually be putting a new motor in the uh, Red 92 Civic. In fact, my challenge to myself is to get this completed, start to finish in one day. Um, I haven't pulled a single cam D series in a while. I have before, but uh, never in an EG hatch. In fact, this is my very first EG. I've had a lot of EF Civics, um, never uh, any of the newer ones, the fifth gen. So pretty excited about this. Let's see if I can uh, get her out smoothly. I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse. We're going to get everything set up, pull these cars out of here, get the red Civic SI in Bay 1, and uh, let's get to it. Stay tuned. <laughs> guys and there she is excuse the poor lighting here but i hope you guys can tell she is a really clean civic uh this is like i said over and over original si so it has the <clears throat> disc brakes in the rear it also has the original sunroof up top um you can see the interior is super clean this car is all original and unmolested uh really excited to begin working on this car as my first eg project um i think it's going to be a really Good little Civic to get started on for me. I've always been working on EFs, so something this new is um, definitely <clears throat> out of my wheel well, but a lot of these Civics are similar, so should go together okay. Now, I know some of you guys are wondering what engine swap I'm going to be putting in this thing because I had a few motors laying around here. However, I'm not going to be putting in a B-Series at this time. I do have this GSR swap, which I do want to swap in eventually because I've always wanted an EG GSR B18C swapped uh, car. However, due to the fact that this thing is so original and it's, you know, really been kept to its stock form this, this long, I really think it would be worth trying to, I guess, uh, so restore this to original condition and kind of run it through the gears and romp around, maybe hit a track day or two, you know, see what it felt like back in 1992, be able to go back in time and relive the performance experience in that aspect. And then later on, yes, I will swap the B18C GSR motor in there. I do want to do a comparison before and after, even maybe take it to the track and run some laps around just to really see what kind of performance difference the engine swap does. But that's going to be the project for now. I'm actually going to put another D16Z6 in this 
And that is over here. This one has allegedly like 120,000 miles and it looks to be, I guess visibly, it seems to be in better condition than the one that's in there. Um, I mentioned already that this one's low on compression potentially because it's definitely burning oil and you can tell she's tired, she's old, she's oily and it's, uh, it's time she comes out and we'll send her on down the way when it's time. But for now, let's get this going on a time lapse. I'm gonna begin taking this apart, I believe, at this day and age, they all say it's better to take the motors out the bottom. Now, I've never done that. I've always taken motors out of the top of Civics, but let's try and get it done. Let's see if it uh, works out better that way, and I'll take you along for the ride. All right, guys. So I said I was going to try and get this done in one day. It is currently 3 o'clock right now, 3 p.m. on Tuesday, December 27th. So I'm going to begin taking this thing apart. I'm going to go one section at a time. I'm going to take my time, but I'm going to do it right. And honestly, if I don't finish it in one day, I'll probably end up finishing it in two. But uh, we'll take you along for the ride. guys figure i'd take you along for the ride i was working on getting the engine swap completed in the civic but i just got a hot lead on the next project car i've been looking for a honda element for a while and one came up on marketplace from a gentleman that owns a salvage yard but basically he said all the parts are in it it just needs to be assembled he hired he fired his mechanic that was working on it got he mechanic swapped the engine out got a brand new engine in it and running but uh, never hooked up the radiator or the AC condenser. Then apparently the bumper needs to be slapped back on and it should be good to go. So um, yeah, he said it doesn't have a lot of rust and so you know, for a thousand bucks, he said I could have it and I figured that's a good deal because when those things are fixed up, you know, they're worth anywhere, anywhere from 3,500 to five grand. So I'm gonna go ahead and swoop this thing up. I'm gonna go take a look at it right now. It's actually dropped off uh, in a Walmart parking lot about 50 minutes north of my house, um, waiting on another tow truck to come pick up and to take, take it the rest of the way back to the house. So after I get it, um, that will be the next project. As soon as this engine swap is done, we're gonna roll that in, quickly get that put back together and we'll send it on the way. But uh, you know, maybe we'll even enjoy it for a little bit because I like elements and I've always wanted one, but just wanted to take you guys along for the ride. All right guys, feast your eyes on the next project just uh, arrived on site and this is what she looks like so far uh, she ain't pretty but apparently all the parts are in the car all right we can leave that car there in the lot I just talked to the tow truck driver he said he's gonna be arriving on site in the next 30 minutes so I'm gonna head back to the house wait for him to arrive and we'll catch you over there oh, I'm totally fucked I'm totally screwed he's uh, Lansing towing and recovery just towed my four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive element all the way here. <sighs> Not on a flatbed. In fact, it's still in park. So I'm sure this thing's fucking toast. The rear differential is leaking fluid. I have a video when we first saw the car. It was not leaking anything. Now it's been spraying fluid back here. I'm sure it's gone. Here's the totaled element. I just put the battery from Costco in her. 
So this is the first time I'm actually putting a key in her and turning her over or see what he's seeing what she does at all with any sort of juice. So here we go. Okay, that's gonna be a power. We got, okay. I got a drive light that's blinking. That's not good. Okay, she, wow, she did come to life. That's good. Let's see if, what she does here. reverse I have no drive I have no park so we have a flashing D light I assume that's some sort of trouble code we'll have to look into that because of the tow job issue but at least she runs and starts at least all right here we go all right guys it's the next day and um, I'm gonna chat with you for a minute while I explain the situation here but basically as you can see I got pulled away from this project here you know, I was trying to do the whole thing where I finished the swap in one day because I found a really good deal on another car. And when you find a lead on something that, you know, is a good price, you have to jump on it right away so nobody does. So I really got preoccupied with that whole ordeal and I really only spent about two hours wrenching on this thing last night. I did about 45 minutes today. And um, as you can see, um, you know, with the engine still in the car, I'm at the point where it's about to come out. I was going to put it on a time lapse to take the hood off and drop the engine here, but I figured I'd explain also where I'm at. As you saw in the footage, the project car from last night is a bust. It is at this point total. Uh, you know, a car like that is probably worth four to five thousand dollars when it's fixed up and running good. And I was lucky enough to get that car for a thousand. And my plan was to basically assemble it, which is all it needed. It was, I was told that it just had a new engine put in, but it needed the AC condenser and the radiator put back in. And basically the front bumper slapped back on and be good to go. So I thought, okay, a little assembly work, all the parts are included, this should be an easy one. I had the car towed to me, you know, all the way from up north. And um, by the time it got to me, it had been on three different tow trucks. The first two towed it on a flatbed, no problem, just the way it was supposed to be for an all-wheel drive vehicle. And the last one, as you guys saw in the last clip, it brought it in basically uh, on the rear two wheels on the ground and the car was in park. And when I actually felt the rear differential underneath, it was hot to the touch. Um, you know, it burned my hand right away and smelled like burnt gear oil. So uh, really not a promising situation. And then, you know, the guy said that it started and ran, and after I put a battery in it, it did start and run, which is, you know, a good thing. Um, lets me know there's some, some good, there's some hope here to this story. But, uh, you know, I got in a fight with the tow truck driver when he brought it in like that. I was, I was pissed, you know, shit hit the fan. I was like, what are you doing, man? This is all wheel drive. And, you know, this tow truck driver had the nerve to argue with me at first and they try and explain that it wasn't all wheel drive. Uh, I showed him with my flashlight underneath the car. So this is the drive shaft, it connects to the rear differential. Yes, it's four wheel drive, all wheel drive, whatever you want to call it. And um, either way, it should have been on a flatbed. And you know, he finally came around at the end of things and apologized and I'm not gonna blame him because the mistakes happen and you know, it is what it is. And I still shook his hand and uh, you know, I told him I would make the claim through AAA like he told me to and that's what I did. I called AAA, um, you know, there was, contracted out the tow truck company and um, they will file a claim with the company. They should, the tow truck tr company should reach out to me and begin trying to amend things. But if they don't, apparently within 72 hours, uh, AAA will then have one of their people intervene and begin trying to resolve the, pro resolve the situation. So I don't know where this is gonna end up yet. I really didn't want to make this video because I was just really excited about this new uh, EG hatch that I was working on. I was going to do this D16 swap and get things going, you know, in the stock form and then begin working on the you know, GSR swap and whatnot down the road. But here suddenly I got kind of curbsided, landslided, hit. I got kind of bogged down with this whole ordeal. So now, um, I'm not sure what to do. I'm really not feeling good about the whole thing. I, I can't keep working on this without having my mind out there in the driveway thinking, how am I gonna get that clunker 
inside the garage. You know, it doesn't shift in any gears. It's not moving under its own power, even though it does power up. So I have a bunch of, you know, hoops to jump through to get that thing back and going. Uh, you know, like I said before, a car like that's only worth four to five grand once it's fixed up. And at this point, for me to put a new drivetrain, a new differential, a new uh, drive shaft or transaxle, whatever it needs, it's gonna cost, you know, with labor and parts, you know, thousands. So a car like that is effectively total. And it's unfortunate, but at this point, I don't want to junk the car. I don't want it to end up in a junkyard the way it, it could it could go that way. Um, I wouldn't be JDM Garage Hero if I just let every clunker that gave me a hard time, you know, um, to get the best of me. And if they all just ended up in the junkyard, then I wouldn't be saving cars. And that's the name of the game. That's what I'm trying to do. So uh, as much as it sucks and as sad as I am, I'm I'm, I'm really bummed out. I'm I'm fucking depressed. I mean, my tools are. None of the batteries are charged and my GoPro died and my, one of my batteries got crushed by the tow truck last night, ironically, and um, I'm just barely wrenching away here, just methodically getting this done at this point. I was going to try and bust through and do a cool video, getting it swapped on in 24 hours, but who the fuck cares now? I'm just trying to get through it and have fun, enjoy the last little bit of it before I got to start working on the uh, monstrosity of an element project out there. So. It is what it is. I'm going to stay up, hustle hard, keep it going. And, um, you know, if anything else comes up in the meantime, we'll catch you back. But thanks for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of this EG swap. <laughs>watching that engine come out the uh, d16 z6 is now in the corner i'm gonna prep the new z6 swap to get ready to go make sure that all the wires are good i know a few of them were cut so i'll have to solder them back together before uh you know we place her back in the car i'll also probably do a little bit of tidying up looks like this engine bay has seen some better days so i'm gonna want to go through and clean what i can uh you know just for now until we do the next v18c swap so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, sorry, my energy's a little bit low from the whole Honda Element tow truck situation. I'm really hoping that that gets sorted out in the near future here, waiting on a call back from either the tow yard or AAA. So I know in a few more days, we'll probably have some more information. So hopefully on the next upload, we'll have a engine in the car as well as an update on the Honda Element situation. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, and thanks a lot.